All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. The uh, 69th installment of Playing to Win. Uh, my friend Jay Campbell should need no introduction. We've done a few podcasts together. Um, we lost episode 68 to the uh, censors, unfortunately. But if you guys want to see that conversation with Peter McCullough, make sure you go over to my uh, Facebook page. It still lives there. You just have to scroll down about a week back, and it's definitely worth watching. Um, Jay. Really, I watched it. It was amazing. Great job on that. Thanks, brother. Uh, Jay, it's it's... It's been a minute or two uh, since we've done something together. We've talked a lot about optimizing uh, the body, especially as it ages. You and I are seasoned gentlemen. You you somehow defy age better than I do. Can I can I throw up that picture you guys posted from your recent trip to Tulum? Just yeah, no, no, for I'm not sure. Show the kids. Um, yeah, absolutely. I just want to kind of frame this so you guys understand why I look to Jay for you know conversations like this. Um, first came across his stuff a few years ago and uh he's uh he's he's one of the og dudes that knows about this stuff share screen um so this oh this is a global picture anyway this is this is on your public facebook so this is you the other week in tulum you're you're 50 what that i'm almost 52 my wife is almost 51 and yeah that picture is literally from monday yeah and actually uh isla mujeres uh right off of uh you know you know where that is the island off of cancun the Island of Women is what the it's The Island uh, of Women, that's right. Yeah, obviously, bro, that's my favorite place in the whole world now. But anyway, was it, was it jam-packed with the ladies? No. Um, well, so, you know, where we were, kind of not. Um, but yeah, dude, that's like a place. If you're a single guy and you're looking to leave, <laughs> that's where you go, for sure. All right. Yeah, and there's tons of, like, expat women now that are just, like, you know, opting out of the system that are all down there now, too. So, yeah, it's an amazing place. I mean, but the, as you know, Richard, you got one mile. And it's perfectly crystal green water, shallow, no rocks. I mean, it's literally God. It's God country, man. Yeah, it's beautiful. I, I don't know anything better. Um, I look forward to getting some traveling. And now that they've lifted the restrictions here in Canada, I can finally move about. That's awesome, man. So, um, okay, so let's hop into this because we're going to talk about peptides. We've got an, about an hour to chop it up real quick. Let me just grab this question. So uh, Wayne's asking what happened to the how to create a YouTube channel video uh, that was published yesterday. Um, guy requested a video on how to grow a YouTube channel and get traction with his book. I responded. Uh, I ended up uploading the wrong video. There was like a 90 second uh, part of the entire video that needed to get removed, including a very brief fart that ended up in the final video that I, nice. <laughs> that I didn't upload the wrong, right one. So I had it uh, removed and I got the other one uploaded. So that'll publish tomorrow. So you can get the answers to that one uh, tomorrow, Wayne. But uh, yeah, I, I talked about it on the community page. Um, what awesome. should we start with with peptides, dude? Because this is something that is incredibly important. And we've talked before about how the medical system doesn't really, it's not really designed to operate in such a way where it provides health care. It more or less provides sick care where it keeps you on their drugs and their prescriptions uh, as long as possible in an unhealthy and inflamed body. Um, what, what, what was it that brought you to peptides? Why don't we start with that? Like what are peptides and what brought you to peptides? Yeah. So for, so for, for just for the purposes of like letting people know how profound they are. And you know, this, when we met in person, I wasn't as bald as Richard, but I was pretty close. I mean, this is my hair is the result of peptides. Okay. I've regrown my hair, uh, at the age of nearly 52, um, uh, you know, through the peptide that you know, we can talk about at some point in the show that, you know, is a company that I own, uh, GHK, it's called Oxano Grow, but it's GHKCU copper peptide and carbon 60 together. But that's to let people know, I don't have a before and after, but you can go on my website, you know, Richard's shown them before. Uh, and I know Richard, you've used it before and you even grew in like the areas that you have, your hair started coming back in, but I mean, I know you're chrome dome, that's your look, whatever. But yeah. the reality is, is that peptides are essentially fractionated proteins uh, organic in nature that are now synthesized in a lab that could do all sorts of, you know, wonderful modalities from healing to help with cognition, to enhancing immunity, to extending telomere length, you know, enhancing longevity, uh, profound cognitive and healing stuff, fat loss, muscle gain. I mean, there's so many different things about peptides that we haven't even really gotten into. Um, and as, as you said, they are the, the future of medicine. I, and I hate using the word medicine because like you said, it's dead, right? Like mm -hmm. people think of medicine, like sick care, give me a band aid or a pill and peptides are treating the root cause of whatever your issue is. And then fundamentally 
uh, offering a regenerative effect. Yeah, that's 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 a fair way to put it. Um, how are they changing over time? Because I think you've mentioned you first started using them uh, 15, 20 years ago, like in the 2000s, yeah. basically. Yeah. Um, are they are they getting better? Are they improving? Is anything changing or is it pretty much the same you know, technology today? So it's a great question. So they are improving. Uh, we're actually moving from peptides to, um, you know, essentially uh, bioregulators, which that that's a whole nother show you and I can do that really uh, the patents are owned by Ru by Russian scientists and they're truly uh, more profound than peptides are. Now, I don't want to like get people to like say, oh, shit, how do I get them? Because you really can't get them. There are companies that sell them you know, offshore pharmacies, but I don't really, quote unquote, trust them because I personally haven't used them myself and stuff like that. But I've, I've read the research. But to, to really drill down on your question, I started using peptides in 2005, 2006. I can't really remember. I know I started with using a company called Ipamorel. I'm sorry, Ipamorel was the peptide. The company was called Southern Research Company. Mm. And they were literally just the back office of a compounding pharmacy, you know, back in the day in Texas. And to, again, answer your question more directly, as we've evolved and peptides have become more ubiquitous, you know, in medical circles, in doctors, functional medicine doctors, holistic healer practitioners, uh, I believe that it's uh, like everything else with wonder pills, drugs, supplements, you know, people start diluting things because they see the money opportunities. So you do have to be what I would call buyer beware where you get your peptides. Now, just so everybody knows, uh, you know, every country has different laws and classifications around uh, the usage of peptides. Um, thankfully, there are peptides that are quote unquote FDA approved. And obviously if the FDA rubber stamps it, it's pretty much good anywhere else mm. uh, around the world because of the way that system works. Again, that's a whole nother subject, but uh, they are under scrutiny, Richard. They have always been under scrutiny because obviously they represent a massive threat to the profit system of big pharma and sick care, right? Like if, 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 if I'll give you a perfect example and you know this personally, if you tear your knee at 45 and up and you have an ACL and an MCL reconstruction, mm. a legitimate orthopedic surgeon who's familiar with using peptides, you know, has a moral and a financial dilemma to their practice because they could give you BPC 157 and TB 500 and heal you better or I'm sorry, as good or better than any reconstructive surgery. But as you know, the reconstructive surgeries cost $60,000 or whatever they are through benefits. And then he gets his 18 to 22 grand, you know, your insurance, you pay a, make a co-payment if you have insurance and you're lucky enough of 3,500 or whatever it is. And the game's that way, but we now know, and again, I've interviewed people on my podcast, some of the world's top orthopedes uh, who will say, if you're 45 or 50, and I know about the structural, you know, loss, at, you know, due to age, I'm not going to do that surgery on you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you, you know, uh, BPC 157, TB 500 for two months and call it a day. And you're going to get just this great regenerative effect and regrowth of the tendons and the ligaments and, you know, the structural integrity of the actual injured joint better than you would for me cutting on you. So it's, it's crazy how much they've replaced, you know, this idea that, oh, you know, I tore my shoulder. Oh, I tore my ACL and I have to have surgery. Yeah. Um, I've, I've personally used BPC 157, um, for joint issues and TB 500 TB is more for like muscle tissue, right? Yeah, TB500 is for instant um, inflammation suppression. So if you have yeah. a massive injury, like you blow your ACL, you blow your shoulder out, you want to use it, that in, you know, in the first 10 to 14 days. But then, yeah, as you know, the BPC157, which stands for body protective compound, is literally like a magic potion when you use yeah. it. Yeah, and I've used that on my knee, and it, and it, it is. It, like, I, like I healed my knee. I've, <laughs> you know, I've had issues with like standing uh, over long periods, like standing in lineups, like when we met up, we were in LA uh, visiting. We did, of course, you know, the Universal and the Disney because I was there with my kid. We were doing a little yep. bit of a, a trip and like standing in lineups and like, you know, like all that bull crap. Oh, it's horrible. It, you know, when you get older, you know, your joints start to wear out. It's like, yep. you know, you're kind of fucked because you get older and yeah. something like this is, is actually very, very helpful. And I was hesitant to use it for a while. Like I just, I just did the standard, you know, like take this stuff from, from Costco or the sure. glucosamine and chondroitin yep. and, you know, the standard, like, you know, healing things. There was even an article that I read one time that said, just eat, just eat loads of jello because it's got <laughs> gelatin and that'll get in your joints and that'll lubricate them and it'll be all better. But none of that stuff worked. And I got over my, uh, I don't know, needleitis or whatever the problem was, you know, that I had, but it's a 30 gauge, very short, fine needle. You inject it very close to your joint. There's a little bit yep. of lump there from the, 
from the liquid because it's a water-based fluid. Yep. And, uh, you, you know, you kind of massage it in and literally within a few weeks, like two to three weeks, there's a pretty significant improvement. And I think within about a month, maybe five or six weeks, no troubles at all. And Completely it's healed. Yeah. It's healed. It's healed. Like yeah. I don't have problems again. Um, anytime I've injured like any joint in my body, I've, I've got two bottles of BPC-157 in my fridge. It's not um, compounded, like it's not mixed yet. Yep. Um, but I just keep it there in case I hurt myself. And I've done no, things just where- just going to tell you that. Uh, you know, you I do something travel, stupid like you mess up your back. Like I'm a tall guy like you and I mess up my back yep. sometimes. I just, yep. just lie on my stomach. I pop in a, a, a syringe. My girlfriend yep. just grabs a clump of skin, yep. you know, where it hurts. Yep. Injects it in there. Pff, you're good. Um, it, it's it's, it's very, totally very true. I, I literally was just going to tell you that I've made the mistake of leaving home without it. Yeah. You know, when I travel, I travel so much and it's like, I will never make that mistake again. I mean, I literally take a vial of TB500 and BPC combined. And by the way, before people ask, yes, you can combine them. There are com compound pharmacies that will push, push them together. I recommend keeping them separate for what the reasons Richard already said, because you want the TB for when you're seriously injured. And then you want the BPC as a maintenance dose, which is what you're talking about. But yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. You can inject BPC for any injury. I mean, really any soft tissue, ligament, tendon, your swell, you, you know, you're strained. I did it like with my bicep that. too, by the way. Yeah, like oh, I, eight joints, dude, bicep detachments. Like I must have had a mild tear or something. I just did a couple of shots like right here and like the meat of it all. Yeah. About a week or two, like three or four shots. Fine. Bro, right. I've seen guys tear the entire distal part of the bicep, like where the intent, you know, the insertion is right here. Yeah, where BPC. I mean, tore it off the bone and, you know, where it's like a purple bruise hanging. Yeah. Yeah. And I've seen guys inject BPC and, you know, before and afters of one month and it completely heals it. Now you're still going to have that scar from where it detached, but it does, it completely heals it. And no, there's no modality in any surgical ward that can do that. As you know, it's not possible. Let's, um, let's talk about, um, some of these other talking points we have in the, in the description here. Sure. Uh, number two we've got is the truth about peptides. Um, you've got to be above average intellect to use them. What do you mean by that? Okay, so this is, I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to get into this. So as you know, which we'll be talking about the course, we launched the course in early April, uh, we did, you know, the typical one week launch. And now, you know, people like yourself are promoting it. You know, Ben Greenfield promoted it. And what we found, Richard, <laughs> this is crazy, is that you cannot be, and again, this is not, you know, probably, not, probably nobody in your crowd, to be honest with you, but an average person you know, of an average IQ attempts to use peptides and they're going to get confused. Mm -hmm. And the reason that is, as you know, is uh, con reconstitution of, you know, two milligram, five milligram, 10 milligram vials, you know, understanding the difference between a microgram and a, and a, and a milligram, uh, you know, understanding the difference between bacterial static water and the, and the uh, constituent of the raw peptide. There's a lot of little sciencey things you know, that are involved in the usage of these things that the average person is like, dude, I mean, I mean, like I'll, I'll give you a better you example. Just give me like, a pill is what they're saying, right? Well, like, and then that's I'll when they go to the doctor and get a pharmaceutical. I'll give you a better example. People will listen to our stuff. This will happen to you. It's probably already happened to you a hundred times for all I know. And they're like, Oh my God, you got me so excited. I want to heal. You know, I went and bought it. You know, I ordered the syringes, blah, blah, blah. And then it's like, Oh fuck. What, you know, what do I do now? Yeah, what did and I get it's into? It's like, well, did you listen? So, you know, this is coming from Nick and I, you know, we did a private uh, group call about three weeks about this. We're kind of like, there's a certain level of intellect that you really have to possess, you know, from a critical thinking and discernment standpoint that like no amount of videos of me or you pinching and withdrawing and injecting and all that stuff is really going to teach you unless you have this, like, like I said, this is like this minimum standard of information and, and mm -hmm. knowledge. And, and so that's where it really gets weird is like, do your homework. If you're going to listen to this today and you're going to buy these, and obviously both of us recommend that you do go down this path for so many reasons, just pay attention. And, and, and Richard, you know, to, to people in the public's defense, there's not a lot of great information out there. Mm -hmm. There's bro boards, you know, yeah, there's, Peptide research chemical company websites with information, but there's yeah. not a lot of really good information in there. And I've told you this before, I think on one of our podcasts, and maybe it was in private, but when Nick and I, and I'm talking about Nick Andrews, uh, who's the co-founder of my company is here. And you know, Nick, uh, you know, when we, when we went to a4 M in 2018 together in Las Vegas, the big anti-aging convention, you know, we were at the two biggest peptide vendor booths 
And we saw all the doctors rushing up there and we were listening to their questions and we're like, oh my God, you know, these people are writing scripts for these things and they don't even know the first thing, you know, so that's kind of where we are. And, you know, so even doctors, you know, as you know, this, the majority of people that have purchased the course are doctors. And some of the questions I feel from them are like, you're fucking writing scripts to patients, <laughs> right? So there is like this basic level of awareness and knowledge that somebody has to have. And obviously if you take our course, which we'll talk about, you know, not to be a shill, you know, you can gain that, mm. but it, it is difficult. It's, it's not, you know, buy it over line, comes to your house and then boom, you start injecting it. It's not that simple. It's, I would say it's a little bit overwhelming at first, but once you get your head wrapped around the basics of reconstituting a dry powder and a vial, yeah, how to draw it into like a backfill syringe, how to backfill an insulin syringe, yep. where to inject, you know, yep. like how often to inject, uh, there's, I mean, you can't get around it, right? Like there's right. not much in the way of peptides that, that will be useful if it passes through your digestive tract. It, it, it has to generally go into like, it, it, it has to go into your skin. There's, there's yes. really no way around it. If you want the healing benefits, you're going to have to poke a tiny little hole in your body. Um, so, so Richard, let's talk about that because do you have, so first off, yes. And thank you for saying it, but do you have any idea how many doctors are out there? And again, not their fault that they're as clueless, but they are buying oral. I just, this is again, new stuff that we find out from the people who are purchasing the course. They're buying oral lozenges of these injectable peptides. These really? compound pharmacies are preying on these, the ignorance of these doctors. I mean, I had a really smart guy who follows me, messaged me about a month ago, maybe five weeks ago. He bought the course and he's like, look, man, I bought the course because I love you. I support your work. But he goes, I've been using peptides for three years and they don't work for me. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And then he tells me that he's been taking a lozenge of it from Rowan. I'm, I'm like, what? Who, who sold you? He sends me pictures. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. So then it's like, you realize that again, it's buyer beware, prayer be preyed upon. You know, all these people out there in the medical community who are clueless are now being taken advantage of people that are supposed to be their allies, mm -hmm. selling them worthless oral lozenges. So let's go back to what you just said. This is very important for anybody watching this podcast. You cannot take a peptide. Okay. Now there are rare exceptions and there are people out there like, you know, seeds and some of these other people that are selling BPC in a capsule. And BPC in a capsule is essentially worthless. I know I'm just going to get mad. People are going to get mad at me because the dosage, you already said it, Richard, that is required to be orally bioactive is not found in the capsules that you're buying them. Now, I'm not going to tell you that you won't get some benefit for your microbiome because again, in the stomach, you'll get something. But if you expect to take an oral capsule of BPC with a delt injury, a joint of the elbow, a knee, an ankle, you're fooling yourself. You're not going to get jack shit. You, even if you took the whole bottle, it's not about the actual dosage in the capsule. It's about, as you said, Richard, it's about pa first passed through the digestive tract. The only way an oral capsule of medication is effective is through an alkylation process, a methyl alkylation process, which means it has to pass through the liver, which as you know, Richard, with anabolic steroids that are oral, you know, that's what causes liver damage. And really mm -hmm. anything that's methyl alkylated, if it's taken repeatedly, will cause damage to your hepatic system, which is the liver function. So all these people out there that are buying BPC, and dude, you know this, there's Facebook companies now, you see them, they're in your ads, buy this BPC, I've seen Wolverine healing and all this nonsense. And then I look at the dosage and I'm like, anybody who buys that is getting ripped off because there's not enough active ingredient. And even if there was, and by the way, it's illegal if they put an active amount, uh, it doesn't make it through the digestive system. So you have to inject. Now, before somebody fact checks me and leaves me something on here, there are some intranasal peptides. There are definitely some cognitive nootropic enhancing peptides that you can snort. But as I always say, who the fuck wants to snort? A, a, a nootropic, well, you can inject it. And then again, you know, again, to fact check myself, there are some oral nootropic peptides like dihexa, uh, C-Max and Solanc that you can take that are effective. But outside of that, Richard, as you said, mm. everything has to be injected. Highest impact, most bioavailable in the body, into portal circulation, you have to inject it. If you're buying peptides and orally sucking them or licking them or lozenging them, you're not, you're getting ripped off. So 
let's kind of go through the categories because the stuff that seems to matter most to people whenever they ask me seems to be fat loss, muscle gain, healing, cognition, and longevity. So yeah. peptides for fat loss and muscle gain would include epimorelin, tessamorelin. I'm not familiar with CJC or MOTC. That's something a little bit newer. Yeah, so so they're not really... MOTS is definitely newer. CG, CJC1295 with DAC or without DAC. And what that means is it's just the carrier molecule and how long it's bioactively available in the body. Um, CJC has been around a long time too. Uh, in the, if you go back into the bro world and the bodybuilding forums, they used to call it FRAG, uh, you know, IGF-1 fractionated or fragmented or whatever like that. So there's been like different names for it. But nowadays it's very common to see compounding pharmacies and research chemical companies putting CGC1295 and Ipamorelin together. And, and, and I'll talk about all of those. Um, so basically these are fat loss, muscle gain, you know, again, that's how they quantify these peptides because they uh, increase the natural uh, pulsatile secretion of growth hormone, right? From your pituitary. And um, Ipamorelin has this unique ability. It's the only peptide found that we know of. And I'm sure eventually there'll be more that are isolated that are similar, but it does not shut down and i shouldn't say shut down but it doesn't slow the body's uh release of growth hormone when you use it mm -hmm. which by the way i should clear this up now too as you know this um i wrote an article about this about a year it's actually been a year that's how fast time is moving about using growth hormone and i don't want to rabbit hole but we now know that if you use growth hormone you know and this is obviously similar to a peptide like Ipa or Tessa. And Tessa is the closest to growth hormone. But if you use growth hormone in a low clinical dose surgically, uh, where you're only using it, say, Monday through Friday or even Monday through Saturday, and you take a couple days off a week, and then you you know shut it down for three or four months a year, you're not going to shut down your body's natural growth hormone production. It's completely a myth and a lie. And also, again, being given to us by, you know, our friends at the top because mm -hmm. they don't want people on growth hormone. That's a whole other story for another day. But to, to, to your point, ipamorelin, if you use that by itself in isolation, it does not disturb the pituitary. It increases growth hormone release. It's going to give you better sleep for definitely fat loss. If your diet is, is, is relative to fat loss, you know, you have some maintenance uh, calorie intake, um, better skin quality. It's IPA is the best peptide by far for women. If I'm going to tell a woman who wants to lose some, you know, weight and get thinner and, and leaner and, you know, more curvy and slim, that's the, it actually problem. works better for women. Doesn't it? What does? Epimorelin actually yeah, is, is more effective on for, women. For, 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 uh, for, for women. That, yeah. My wife has been using IPA since we first started dating in 2011. And, and, and ladies, you can't slam back like three cakes a day and eat crappy food and just inject epimorelin and right. hope that you're going to look right. like a model. Like, not, you know, no, the it, diet and exercise has to come with it too. That, that's way. good that you said that. And I should have said that. And I usually, you know, preface this peptides are not like everything else. They're not magic. Uh, you definitely have to live the lifestyle that, you know, Richard and I espouse and talk about, you know, control for your control your insulin exercise lip weights do cardio blah 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 you know hopefully you're fasting you're metabolically flexible whatever but all that said ipa is great for men or women um in isolation as a great fat loss peptide tessamorelin is the best peptide for men it's the closest it's hard to get to for men though isn't it you what tessamorelin is more difficult to get for men that's what I was just going to get to. So, so Tessa is the best if you can get it, but it's almost impossible to get it. It is now a pharmaceutically controlled and prescribed peptide for men who have what it call, is called lipodystrophy, which is a disease, uh, a presentation for men that are HIV positive. And what it really means is that it, it uh, lipodystrophy is this like visceral fat uh, accumulation around the central adiposity. So right around the belly button, you mm -hmm. know, you guys have really bad, hard visceral fat there. So Tessa was created to tear through that gut fat and belly fat. So like for guys like us, you know, who are looking to lean out, man, Tessa will shred you. But the problem is it's outrageously expensive. It's more expensive now than growth hormone, especially if you have, you know, a Western script for it, mm -hmm. uh, which is almost impossible to get again, unless you have HIV and you have lipodystrophy. There are research chemical companies that sell it. Uh, Peptide Sciences sells it. Uh, I don't think legally they're actually able to sell a, it. Do you have a link for it. um for your for your preferred peptide company? Just just drop it in the private chat there over the right, and I'll copy and paste it in the into sure. the description for people watching. Well, actually, where to get this that's stuff. another question for you and I to talk to. But yeah, I'll do that. Um, but but the reality is is uh, that's how you got to do it. You got to have a research chemical company that you trust. 
I always recommend people to test. There are companies out there, you know, you can do a Google search and find a company and you can test a peptide. It's not expensive, you know, and you can see how it tests out. You know, most research chemical companies are going to test out anywhere from between 80 and say 90% uh, label claims or efficacy. You know, the peptide research company that I recommend, which is Limitless, which, you know, I'll give a link for guys, uh, you know, at this show, um, whenever we've tested them and again, when we, I mean, me and Nick, he's never tested under 93%. Now I can't say that about other research chemical companies. I, you know, I'm not going to talk shade. That's um, uh, limitless life, new, limitless life nootropics, right? Yeah, limitless okay. life nootropics so I'll, yep. so I'll drop that in the description of the video. Yeah, for you guys. And, and you and I will talk off air about that because uh, he wants you to promote for him. But the bottom, my, and, and it, it, I think it's a great opportunity for you, by the way, too, because of all the people that you know. But uh, the reality is, is that there are peptide companies out there that are not making good products. So as always, buyer beware. Uh, there are some that are great. And I'm not here, like I said, to say that this company is not as good as this company. Test your products, see how they are. I've been promoting Limitless for three years now. Uh, I know the owner very clo very closely. You know the story of like where they get their raw materials and their ingredients from. So like they're tried and true, legit. You're not going to This is uh, Nick's company, right? Uh, it's not Nick's company, but you know Nick is involved with a guy who is- okay you know, the supplier, but, but at the end of the day, um, everybody's got to just, wherever you purchase, you got to obviously experiment them, experiment with them on yourself and notice if it works or not. You know, if you don't get any effects at all and you're living a your lifestyle, then you probably know that you got a, a, a shitty peptide. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that's actually a good question though, to add or, or to, to focus around that. Cause we get that a lot is like, okay, so I've reconstituted my vials of say Tessa or IPA or CGC. Jay, how long does it last? Like I put it in my refrigerator, it's refrigerated, right? I know all those things, but how long does it actually last? Like how long does it maintain its efficacy? And that's a question that you could probably ask 10 different people that are experts like myself and you get 10 different answers. But you know, Nick being the formulation genius, 20 years in the biopharma space, he will tell you that in all the tests that he's ever seen, a peptide will never degrade further than six, again, assuming it's legit it will never degrade less than 65% of efficacy. And that 65% of efficacy is somewhere in between 60 and 90 days. So oh, if, you're okay. recon if you're reconstituting, right, you know, a vial of say BPC, you got 90 days to know that it's 100% of whatever you got when you first got it. And then after mm -hmm. that 90 days, it's probably about 65%, which again, is, is still it like, very effective. Is it like HC? where they recommend to keep it in your fridge but not in the door because it's sensitive to motion apparently motion degrades hcg faster as well too so are peptides like that as well where you want to keep it on a shelf it's a great question some peptides, i know this is getting into the geeky weeds but no no but this you know, is good though because nobody answers these questions these are real i mean nobody asks and nobody answers these are great questions actually um they are fractionated proteins you know the active constituent in the label and by the way it's a great question, Richard, because some of the companies like Limitless do not put filler and most peptide manufacturers put filler to stabilize the active ingredient. So like, for example, and some of you guys listening, you know, or watching on the rerun will, will, will understand this. You could buy one research chemical company, Ipam Rowan, and buy Limitless and Limitless will look like it has no active ingredient in it because the other research chemical company has mannitol which is the stabilizing ingredient, which is like the white powdery residue substance. So that when you then reconstitute it with bacterial static water, it looks like it, you know, there's more of that in there. I've gotten hundreds of emails from people in the last two years saying, dude, I bought from Limitless and they scam me. There's nothing in there. And I'm mm -hmm. like, no, it just doesn't have the actual filler. So the bottom line to your question is, Yes, it's a great question because there are peptides where if you inject the reconstituted water right into the peptide, you can destabilize the actual uh, protein molecule. And mm -hmm. how much will you affect the efficacy? Probably not much. You know, Nick talks about this before, but it's still worth consideration that, you know, when you put your reconstituted water into the side of the vial, inject it on the side. Don't inject it right into the powder. And yeah. that way you will preserve the constitutional integrity of the actual peptide. And again, it's not a big deal. If you've injected all the time, you're like, oh, fuck, dude, I always just inject right in the peptide. Then you're still getting an active ingredient, but it's better to just go slow and inject it on the side of the glass 
mm-hmm. so that the water can just fill out, you know, around and then the peptide can just dissolve in the water. Does that make sense? Got it. All right. So, uh, Chris and Wayne, I'll get to your questions before the end of the show. We've got 30 minutes. I want to make sure we get through as much of this as possible. Again, um, all of the details on how to use what they are, dosaging, how to use a syringe, everything is in uh, Jay's peptide course, which is linked in the description. And the Limitless Life Nootropa company has recommended it. I just added that to the description as well. So that's the source of the peptides. They're legal. And the course information is above that. We're going to cover as much as we can before the hour is up, though. Um, let's skip over BPC-157 and TB-500 in my notes here because we already talked about it. Yep. Immunity TA-1, what is that? Yep, so thymus and alpha-1 is okay. a profoundly effective immunity-enhancing peptide. In fact, when I go to the medical conferences now, and I'm actually uh, blessed to be speaking at like a really amazing one, like private invite only in wine country in August. Um, that's like the big deal that all the clinicians that are the highest level people are talking about now is like, what's your, what's your TA one protocol, you know, to stay, you know, above COVID and every old bioweapon bullshit, monkey pox, whatever fuck they're going to le- unleash on us, you know? So it's like TA one in very low maintenance dosages will fucking make you bulletproof. Now, I've been on Richard's show. We've talked about COVID stuff and, you know, how to become, you know, uh, anti-fragile and, you know, all these things you can do, you know, you can take N-acetylcysteine, you know, you can take high doses of vitamin C, you can take, um, you know, glutathione. There's all these things you can do to enhance your um, natural immunity. But if you got access to TA1 and you're carrying that with you, especially as you're traveling around the world, I mean, dude, there's no way that any bioweapon can harm you. Now, I don't want to get into, um, you know, what is the dosage? As you know, it's in the course. There are a lot of clinicians, though, now that are doing like two days on, three days off. I mean, it, it gets really exotic and stuff like that. But the bottom line for people who are watching the show is that thymus and alpha-1 is a very powerful immunodilating or immunomodulating peptide that can keep you safe from pretty much any of the bullshit that's out there. Okay, let's talk about cognition. So this... These peptides, you're saying, will improve cognition, brain function, productivity. Uh, Selanac, dihexa, and Cmax. What are those? Yeah, so 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 there's there's those are the three: cerebrolysin, Selanc, and Cmax, and dihexa four. Sorry. Um, What do they do exactly? Like, what is the end result if you add these peptides to your protocol? And like, is this just like a sub Q like injection you throw in your shoulder or into your belly fat? So all of those peptides are actually both injectable and I mean, you don't jam them in your brain, obviously. No, 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 no. <laughs> but, but, they're, but they're, I mean, well, in truth, you always bring up the smart questions in truth, you could. Okay? okay. And how you would do that is, you know, you pick again, like you already said, you kind of grab a side, you know, obviously if you're a very thin you guy, like fat you on your head somewhere. it's kind of hard. I mean, there's like people that. that have areas like up here. Sure. Like the nape of your neck. Yeah. But the truth is, is that both all four of those peptides I mentioned, cerebralizin, Selenc, Cmax, and Dihexa are orally available and also injectable. Okay, again, so you can take them orally too. Well, so in, again, injectable, greatest impact delivery system always. But some of those cognitive enhancing peptides have been um, designed to pass uh, you know, orally through, uh, you know, they're not methyl alkylated, so there's no risk to the liver, but they are designed to make uh, through first pass of the uh, gut. The microbiome okay. again, not as effective. I take 40 milligrams of dihexa every now and then when I'm like, re, re, like want to be extremely creative. You know, I've been on is that like a modafinil maybe. or well, see, that's what I was just going to go to is because I, I, I know I've said, yeah, it triggered you. I said that on your show before. I still compare all nootropic products to modafinil, okay. And you know, there are definitely people out there especially Asian people, which I had had to learn over time who are literally non-reactive to modafinil, which is the most amazing thing. I think, I think I told you this off air one time, like, you know, I met this girl, very successful chick. She's Chinese. She's tiny. And I gave her a 200 milligram modafinil and I told her to you know put it into a quarter and she took the whole thing. And I'm like, <gasps> you're not going to sleep for three days. And then I found out it didn't even work. Okay. You know, so like there are people out there that don't respond to modafinil, but like if you've used modafinil, you know, I compare all nootropic products, whether they're peptides or they're over the counter, you know, capsules. And there's some great nootropics out there from some really amazing biohackers who've made them. Moda is like the standard, 
And for me, and I know you and I've talked about this, like 50 milligrams will give me like four hours of like limitless feeling. Uh, if I go higher than 50 milligrams and take like a hundred, it's amazing. But then I get a fucking earth splitting headache after eight to 10 hours. So I don't really use modafinil anymore at all. In fact, I haven't even touched it for like a couple of years now. I would, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go against it, but I use a microdose of that. But dihexa, like in comparison to Moda at 50 milligrams is like a half to a third as effective. And I've tried going, and that's a 40 milligrams. I've tried doubling the dosage to see if it would like be, you know, for me. And again, this is for me. I don't get anything different. Now I have people that are friends of mine who are doctors who say, dude, that's, you're like a mutant. You know, I, I use 10 milligrams of dihexa and I feel amazing better than if I take 50 milligrams of Moda. So, I mean, dude, at the end of the day, everybody is different. Uh, all the other peptides I've used minorly, uh, but my experience with peptides, cognitive enhancement is dihexa. And I definitely feel an effect at 40 milligrams. Let me ask you a question. We don't have it on the, um, talking points in the description, but I did a cast on Monday night. And one of the things that came up was, um, uh, ED and sexual performance. Are there, are there peptides that enhance that for guys? So not, uh, it's a great question. And I want to clarify this for people. So the latest science on erectile dysfunction is that if you have belly fat, okay. And this is crazy, right? Because like, I know guys who are really lean, you know, they're rocking a four pack. They've got bulging biceps. They take great care of themselves. They're on therapeutic testosterone or whatever, but they've got like a visceral fat pocket right where the belly button is. Mm -hmm. And so they have that like little pooch that will cause erectile dysfunction more than anything else. And the reason, and this is Why again, is way to science it's because the inflammasomes from that visceral fat are literally it, like just ejecting right over the sexual functionality of the testes and um, you know, it's, it's basically blocking dihydrotestosterone from being secreted, which is your powerful anabolic sexual functioning, you know, signal from your hormone. It's, you know, DHT is more powerful than testosterone itself. So it's like, you got to get rid of the belly fat. So all these guys that have ED, it's all due to belly fat. I mean, that's first and foremost, obviously there's guys that jerk off to porn 10 times a day and they have erectile dysfunction because they're, brains are rewired to porn and instant gratification and dopamine signaling and all that bullshit. But if you've got belly fat, that's what causes ED. But to your question, there is a peptide called PT-141. And now there's some other ones that are coming out that some of the research chemical companies are talking about. They're not technically, you know, going to stimulate like Cialis or Levitra or Viagra does nitric oxide formation in the gland of the penis. But there are ones that will, you know, kind of trick the systems that will increase nitric oxide and send blood, you know, faster rushing. So I'm not a big fan. I mean, obviously, you know, we can just mention as a sidebar, you know, the technology out there, I know, you know, about the Phoenix, you know, that is better to remove plaque from the penis, you know, in combination with using therapeutic testosterone or Cialis than any peptide that's going to like make your, you know, dick harder, thicker, you know, better, mm -hmm. strong, having stronger erections. That's going to work better than anything that's out there from a peptide standpoint. What about uh, melanotan too? I heard from a few um, biohacker guys that they, I mean, it just doesn't enhance your tan, but apparently it, it improves sexual function too. Is that true? So in 50% of users, they can definitely notice uh, enhanced erection. Um, here's the thing with melanotan too. I'm glad you asked about it because I really, really comment about it. It really should just be eliminated, dude, because in truth, it enhances and darkens moles. So if you have a genetic propensity to have moles, you're going to get darker moles. And again, I'm not scaring anybody or putting fear bullshit out there. But the bottom line is if you get moles genetically and now you've got darkened moles, the likelihood of potentially, again, potentially getting melanoma is greater. The other issue with uh, melanotan too, and I think you know this, is dude, it causes fucking extreme nausea. Mm. If you take just an absolute micro fragment too much, oh my God, you're doubled over. And the side effects are lasting up to 12 hours. Mm. So you can ruin your day using melanotan too. That's why I tell guys it's not fucking worth it. Unless you're a stage, you know, competing bodybuilder at the very end and you want to look orange brown or whatever, you know, it's not worth it. I mean, dude, most people that use melanotan too, and we talk about this, uh, in the course, they look like Oompa Loompas. 
<laughs> it's not a natural skin color. Um, so, for example, this is melanin tan one. This my skin color. Now, granted, I just came back from the Yucatan, you know, for eight days. Yeah. But this is melanin tan one. I do not. I'm white bread, you know, northern Euro European guy. But like from being in the sun and using melanin tan one, I look like this. And so I'm kind of like a brownish red. Brownish red, know? yeah. Yeah, but this is if you saw me like in person, you know, I look tan. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I was using melanin tan two, I would be orange, which looks like shit. You know, mm -hmm. and again, I, 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 like I said, you look like a competition stage competing, you know, fitness competitor, you know, a bodybuilder. And again, it's not healthy. So I, I just tell people stay away from melanin tan one. I mean, melanin tan two. If you can get melanin tan one, that's how you use it. Again, I've written tons of free articles online about melanin tan one. The other thing, Richard, which is very important about melanin tan one to talk about is that it enhances consciousness. Scientifically proven, it's all in my article. If you're a meditator, you want to use melanin tan one. Mm, okay. Um, let's talk about peptides for longevity and then the do's and don'ts, and we'll take these questions. So epitalin, what is that? And um, talk about that a little bit. So yeah, so epitalin is a great peptide. It's a, how do I say it? There's a lot of different ways you classify it. Basically, it will extend the life of your telomeres. So essentially, it enhances uh, the integrity or the structural integrity of the end caps of your telomeres, which basically... The fraying of your telomeres as you get older is what causes your body to biologically and physiologically decay, which you know causes aging. So the stronger uh, you know the functionality and the integrity of the telomeres, the longer you'll live. Technically, the more you'll resist aging. So it's a great uh, peptide. As you know, you only use it in in bursts, once or twice. You know, I know there's guys out there now that say three times a year. Uh, and again, it's just to strengthen the integrity of your telomeres. It's very easily found. Uh, and again, you don't have to use it very often. So it's for any, I would say this for anyone 45 and older, it's amazing. If you're 40 and up, I highly recommend using it. But for 45 and up, you should definitely be using um, that a Petalon at least once or twice a year. I've heard, I've heard stories from guys that have used it that have um, like returned their hair color. Like if they got yeah. gray in their hair or in their yeah. beard, sometimes their hair color returns. It improves skin elasticity. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it I've does used it a, a few times. Things. Yeah, it does a lot of amazing things. It's not noticeable, but other than like if you would notice those kind of things, but yeah. you definitely resist aging. I mean, again, you know, I'm 51 uh, and I'm pretty young looking and feeling. Uh, and, and I've been using a Petalon, I want to say, since I was 43. Mm -hmm. So, you know, eight years I've been using it. Um, I'm sure it's doing something. But again, there's just tons of scientific research about it. Aren't there tests um, that you can do that like measure your telomeres? Like, yeah, telomer, like, like it'll yeah, tell you what, like your biological ages. So exactly. So you could, so there's actually, so there's actually two companies now because the, the original one was the guys, you know, from, um, Taylor made that, that now created the company called true diagnostic. And you can go to that company. It's really awesome. Uh, it's true diagnostic, T R U diagnostic.com. And it's like 350 bucks and they will literally do your biological age. Uh, but there's a new company now called Glycan Age, and I actually just did a podcast with the owner, and they're from they're based out of the out of Europe, and they test your glycan your you know your AGEs and your glycan, which is your blood sugar content to to also chronologically or biologically not chronologically but biologically age you. So they just sent me their kit while I was in Mexico. I haven't had a chance to prick my finger and like measure that, but I'll I'll look at that. But those are the two companies. It's cool though that you did bring that up because those are the two companies that if you go and you get tested uh you can determine and they're running an algorithm for this right now like if you're using and i'm rabbit holing but it's important if you're using a dht inhibitor for hair finasteride rogaine propecia dutasteride any of those things as i've told you and you know we've talked about this those things are literally the most detrimental things you can take to your cellular health they're shortening your lifespan. I've written pro, you know, prolific articles about what these things are doing to you. Uh, these are the only tests on planet Earth that can actually measure what you're doing to your DNA from a negative fashion. Because, you know, guys will say, dude, I've been using finasteride for 20 years and I'm fine. My blood work is fine. I'm low body fat. I have no inflammation. And I'm always like, okay, well, what does your DNA tell you? Right. Because when you block DHT, which is dihydrotestosterone, and by the way, it's the same thing with AIs. If you suppress estrogen, 
you know, estradiol because you're inhibiting it with these drugs, AIs like Arimidex and uh, Exestamistane and all these fucking bullshit companies or, or products, you are stopping natural, you know, again, biological processes and it's robbing Peter to pay Paul. And ultimately you are killing and decaying the DNA and the cell. So essentially you're shortening your lifespan. I don't want to rabbit hole any further than that. If you want more articles, send me an email. I can give a couple of the articles to Richard. He can link to them. But if you're using finasteride or minoxidil, you need to stop. You need to learn why you shouldn't be doing it. It's that simple. Yeah, there's. I think we did a video together talking about hair yeah. loss uh, prevention items yep. um, that are better than those uh, prescription ones. Um, let's keep moving because because we are time sensitive. Um, do's and don'ts before starting peptides. So that's the whole show. I'll, I'll go like you know as high level as possible. Uh, understand again what we talked about at the very beginning of this that you know. You're, you're in, a, in a league where, as like Richard said, you're going to learn as you go. Initially, you're going to be overwhelmed. It's exactly right. You're like, oh, shit. But after you do this like two or three times, three or four times, you know, you have a whole, whole week under your belt. It becomes a lot easier. Um, you know, one of the big things, too, is like understanding um, conversion, right? Depending on the size of the vial. And, and I can send you this link, which let me do this right now. Why, why I don't, why, so I don't forget, but there's like, you want to have access to a peptide calculator, mm. which I personally believe whoever made this by the way is like awesome. I'm putting it in the, sh in the share real quick here, not the share of the chat. Um, so as you know, that's like, you can even share the screen if you want and show that real quick. But that thing right there is going to solve 90% of peptide related problems because again, here's the thing, Richard, the average person is going to buy their syringes. They're going to buy their product and it's going to come as look as the shows right there, right? Select peptide bio quantity. Yeah. Here I'll five. grab the link for that and put it yeah. in the. So, ba so basically what's going to happen is you're going to buy your syringes and you're going to buy your bio. And then you don't realize that your syringes are, one fourth a CC or half a CC. In fact, I remember talking to you about this shit way back when, you know, cause we all do go through this and then you're like, Oh, well fuck. Like, how am I going to convert this? Because that calculator or, you know, my conversion was based on a one milliliter, which is a one CC syringe. And now I have a one four C. So, so here's some general basic rules. When you start this, do not buy a syringe that is anything smaller than a one cc syringe now so it's universal measure numbers and you know because guys might be in different countries and world different places of the world one milliliter so your syringe should be one milliliter which is one cc so then the math no matter what the reconstitution is whether you have a two milligram a five milligram a 10 milligram a 20 milligram vial you can convert from milligrams to micrograms using that calculator now, again, you don't have to use that calculator, but that calculator is free. It's online and it's amazing. Whoever built it is a genius. Uh, we are working on a app that will do this. Um, you know, it's a little bit of work, but it's coming. But that's what you got to have because that's where people get utterly confused. They do not understand. So again, doctors will message me, you know, dude, I bought one four CC syringes. I'm like, throw them away, go buy one milliliter because mm -hmm. it's just going to confuse you uh, in your math. Uh, we already talked about delivery systems. Uh, do not use anything that is oral uh, unless it's a, a dot, you know, a, a one of the nootropic peptides. Um, don't use BPC capsules. Again, if you have an infected stomach and you're, you know, you're fat, you have inflammation in your gut biome or your microbiome, maybe you get some effect because, you know, people will debate me. And I'll be like, okay, so you get a little in your stomach, but you're not going to get anything from a BPC capsule for an injury. It's just not going to happen. And I know people are going to, you know, leave comments on this channel because you have a lot of people who watch your stuff and they're going to debate this. But I mean, I'm telling you, man, I'm happy to come on anybody's show or podcast and talk about this. There is no way that anything oral is e efficacious enough. It's strong enough a dosage. And even if you illegally packed your capsule with enough, it still wouldn't make it, as you said earlier in the show, Richard, through the gut. It's not going, it's going to degrade. It's not going to be absorbed in the way it would if it was injected. 
All right, so I've added the peptide calculator to the show notes along with John, uh, Jay's recommended peptide company, Limitless Life Nootropics, and the link to his peptide course. Is the course completely open or is it like open and closed after a certain period of no, time? No, it's open now for you. It's open okay. for that with that link, the peptidescourse.com forward slash Rich C. It's open okay. for you. All right. Uh, and um, by the way, they get 25% off. So using Rich's link, it's 25% off, okay? that Nobody else gets that. That's exactly what Ben Greenfield's you know, got rich guy. Actually, you and Ben are the only two people that have promoted it. So cool. no one has promoted it yet. Chris Gathman and I did a podcast, uh, but he hasn't actively promoted it because he's traveling so much right now. So eventually he will, but you guys are the only three uh, influencers that have promoted it. Cool. Well, you know, there you go, guys. Um, so Chris, Amy has a question. Finally got my results from an ultrasound that I have a shoulder tendonitis doing physio already. High blood sugars is diabetic for 38 years has my muscles hard as a rock. Any recommendations? <laughs> what? I have no idea what that means, but uh, I, okay, yeah, I have recommendations. Why are you a diabetic? Are you, if you're type one insulin dependent, that's a totally different thing, but, uh, mm -hmm. and I understand, but that's probably what he means. Probably he's type one insulin, so he's probably lean. Um, uh, dude, like it's hard to answer. The The only question that you would have is like what amount. Well, of... would, would BPC and TB500 help somebody that is diabetic and has like, I yeah, know no, Chris personally, but he's got I heart issues qualify, too. You know, cause it's, it, 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 it's, it's, he's not asking it, but I'll make it relevant. Um, so if you're one of those people, he says 38 years, right? So I, he, he, he could be like older than me. If you're one of those people that has like bone on bone joint integrity, you know, because of injuries, tra you know, training, you know, mm -hmm. maybe you spar, you're a fighter, whatever, you know, those guys, that's where peptides are not going to be wonder wondrous because you still have to have enough cartilage and semi tendinous tissue and ligaments, or what they say, the ligament tendons, connectiveness, uh, the fluid in the joint capsules for guys that are bone on bone. Peptides are not going to do very much, but for guys, most guys under the age of 50 are not bone on bone. So a peptide will help. Okay. Um, let's get this one last question. Wayne says, will peptides help with high aligned cartilage repair? I'm a healthy guy, almost zero processed food. Sugar intake is very limited. I've maintained 170 pound weight since I was 23. I'm 45. What's, what's, what's high aligned? What is it? Um, Good question. I mean, high line is like a form of, uh, uh, is that a typo like hairline? I mean, just look no, it no high line is like a form of like cart it, it's a, it's a cartilage uh, supplement. Like, a it's, it, you were talking about chondroitin and all that stuff, but high translucent like bluish white type of cartilage prevalent in the joints and yeah. respiratory tract and yeah. the immature skeleton. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, so it will, so it absolutely positively will, but again, you know, again, relative to your physical condition, um, sounds like you, it, it, it sounds like for someone like you, it would definitely benefit you for sure. All right. All right, guys. Um, sorry for the limited time with the show. Uh, it's what we got, but um, we covered as much as we could in that time. Um, if you want to learn how to use peptides, you can probably go through a whole bunch of videos and stuff on Jay's channel. Um, he's talked about it a ton uh, amongst other things, or you can just grab the course and it's all organized there in modules um, the peptide company is there. The peptide calculator is there. Um, I've used them personally for joint injuries, muscle injuries. Uh, I've used epitalin usually minimum once a year, sometimes twice a year. I usually do it in the spring and then again in the fall. Um, I don't know. Do I look younger? Who the fuck knows? Um, I, I haven't actually do. tested my telomere. So I jotted that down for true diagnostic because I might check that out because I'm actually curious to see what my biological. And by the way, I'll get the owner of the company to come on your channel, Ryan Smith. He's amazing. He would love okay. to come on your channel and talk to you about that. I'll set that up. I'll, I'll connect you guys after the show. But let me just say this for anybody that purchases the course and, and you know, Richard helped me with this. Uh, you get lifetime updates. So we've already added four new videos since Richard was like, Hey dude, you know, I need more on this. You know, Chris Gethin also said, Hey dude, we need a video on stacking, you know, cause like one of his questions was like, okay, so if I'm a newbie and I understand all these things, what can I take, you know, in addition to, right? So my, I'm, I'm on a fat loss program or a fat loss phase. Can I also take cognitive? Can I take the, you know, the DNA, which is the Epetalon, you know? So he asked all really, really good questions. Uh, let me, let me throw in a bonus cause you asked it and I never finished it cause it just triggered me when I thought of that. Mott C is a peptide that is profoundly effective for fat people. For me and Richard, it won't do shit because we already have upregulated mitochondrial, uh, uh, let's just say integrity. 
Uh, you know, again, the whole big buzzword in the fitness world now is like, you know, stimulating your mitochondrial capacity, bro. But like MOT C is a massive mitochondrial upregulator. So if you're fat, your mitochondria suck anyway. So if you start using MOT C and you're really heavy and you want to lose fat, that is your number one peptide. So somebody who's like 25% or higher body fat and is on a kick, I want to get down to 15%. I want to fix my life. That's the peptide. All right, brother. Thanks for uh, hopping in today, guys. Hope course, you enjoyed brother. it. Leave a, a comment and a like below for the algorithms. And uh, yeah, check everything out that we talked about. It's in the uh, show description. Have an awesome day. We'll see you guys in.